Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming winter storm on Christmas Eve that will be bringing a lot of snow for some areas, 6 or more inches in some portions of the Northeast and the Great Lakes. We're also going to be going over a couple of the models, seeing what they're showing, and we'll talk about your white Christmas chances for much of the eastern United States. We have frigid temperatures behind the storm and even some convective activity in the form of severe weather ahead of the storm. So we have a lot of different factors in play with the storm and we're going to be breaking it down in today's video if you want a personal forecast or if you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll be answering you guys within about an hour or two of you posting it so Here's the current National Weather Service page. We'll go from west to east. We have some flood watches for portions of the Pacific Northwest there. We also see some winter weather advisories in some of the higher terrain of the Northwest. We see some avalanche warnings in effect in that blue for portions of Montana and uh, Oregon, as well as some high wind warnings in effect for portions of Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana with some wind advisories for portions of the Dakotas and Oregon, and even some high wind watches in effect for portions of of southern Alaska. We also see some dense fog advisories in effect for portions of Utah and, uh, and California as well as uh, for another area from Texas to Missouri. And then we see some air quality alerts in effect for portions of southeastern Pennsylvania as well as northeastern parts of Wyoming there. So let's start talking about what some of these models are showing with this event. And let's start off with the GFS then we'll look at the Canadian and then we'll look at the European model and see what all three of those models are showing. So we have a very cold air mass already in place for much of the eastern United States ahead of this storm which would be right here so we have a low pressure starting to develop over portions of the Dakotas we have a, a cold northwesterly flow in place for much of the uh, eastern United States and that's going to be allowing for a already primed atmospheres for some cold air now be before behind this uh, li uh, low pressure system we have some very cold air on that backside so you're going to see a brief transition for a lot of areas from rain to snow as the system continues to move back so let's see what the uh, GFS model does with the storm and as we play this through you start to see that a low pressure forms over northern Minnesota and look at those lines on your screen that's indicating uh, strong winds when you have all these lines called isobars packed closely together that's indicating that you have a very very strong wind flow uh, and those winds might gust closer to 40 or 50 miles per hour in some cases if this were to be true now we also see uh, something else that's going to be very important for some of that severe weather we have conventional Convective activity uh, mainly because we have an inverted trough kind of like this you can see that those lines on your screen are going somewhat like this and that's allowing for convective activity in the form of thunderstorms to form right along this line right here and then also something that's going to help uh, kind of uh, develop the storm a little bit more is that we have divergence now what that is is basically these isobars uh, moving away from each other from one central point so for example this isobar goes here while the other isobar uh, just a little bit further to its west goes a little bit uh, kind of straighter so instead of curving it it's straighter and it's now now they're both con they're going out into different areas so that's going to allow for some more low level energy where these uh, lysobars are kind of splitting up together and that's going to allow again some more energy to form with the storm and that can really help strengthen this system so let's uh, play this uh, GFS model forward and see what it does it forms a line of storms out along uh, from basically from Michigan down through Louisiana and Texas and it brings that line across we have that low pressure up in portions of uh, Ontario and we're seeing more of that activity moving through portions of much of that central part of the United States and as that continues forward you start to see that by uh, probably Thursday morning so Christmas Eve morning we're dealing with some snow potentially on that back end as you get very very cold air on that back side and then as we continue forward you start to see that front sweeps across much of the Ohio Valley and then into the northeast we see a secondary low pressure form over Virginia uh, but also notice those little splotches of yellow and orange that's where you're looking at potential thunderstorms with this event so as we continue this forward you start to see that by uh, this would be late on Christmas Eve getting into Christmas morning and we're looking at again very very strong convective activity uh, moving through much of uh, New Jersey Pennsylvania upstate New York and then the western half of Pennsylvania the western half of upstate New York is dealing with more of that snow uh, for those areas so you're going to potentially see with a strong southerly flow temperatures getting up near 50 degrees in a lot of these areas 50 60 even 70 
degrees as you get further south ahead of the storm and then behind the storm you might see a 30 or 40 degree temperature difference where your temperatures are going to get down into the low teens in a lot of these areas so you will have a very very sharp temperature gradient and that's what's going to allow some of these thunderstorms to form and that's also what's going to allow for some of this heavier snow on the western half of the storm so here would be by christmas morning right around 1 a.m eastern time we're dealing with thunderstorms rolling through uh into eastern new england snow on that backside and don't be uh surprised if you do see a little bit of lake effect on uh that western half of the storm and mainly because your winds are going to be closer to 30 or 40 miles per hour in some cases and that's going to be going right over the great lakes so don't be surprised if you do see a couple of snow showers as you get to Christmas morning and that might help with a couple areas getting uh, maybe a little bit more of a whiter Christmas there. So here as we continue this forward you start to see those lake effect machines turn on you start to see a lot more lake effect but that system's really rolling through and I don't think a lot of these areas I think much of the United States will actually be dry for Christmas day but the bigger issue is going to be shoveling out of the snow that you got on Christmas. Uh, so that's definitely going to probably be or on Christmas Eve that's probably going to be your biggest threat. So I uh, I would recommend probably shoveling Christmas Eve night and then probably doing another quick shovel Christmas uh, morning uh, just so that you don't have to shovel all of that at once on Christmas morning because I know that could be definitely a hassle, especially if you're bringing your family over. So definitely try and prepare in advance. Put down some rock salt so that it helps to melt the snow in advance of the storm. So that system moves out we're dealing with some very cold conditions as well as some lake effect snow on that back end of the storm let's switch over to what the Canadian model is showing we have that low pressure up in the Dakotas and that continues to sweep further to the south we see a large band of some snow uh, moving through portions of the upper Great Lakes and then back through into portions of the western plains uh, and actually probably the central plains and then moving through into portions of the Rockies there where you're looking at uh, some uh, uh, some snowfall over those regions and as we continue with this forward you start to see that low pressure continues to move further to the east we see very very cold conditions on that back end of the system you start to see that where you have all those blue lines on your screen that's indicating temperatures below 32 degrees and we see a lot of that uh, for much of that western side of the system and then you can see those very warm uh, temperatures as you start to get more of those red lines up on your screen that's indicating temperatures above 32 degrees uh, and we can definitely tell because of that southerly flow that's bringing in moisture and warm temperatures straight up from the Gulf Coast and bringing that all the way up into portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast so definitely it'll be a very mild Christmas Eve but a very cold uh, Christmas day so it's really going to be a very interesting pattern that we're going in for the holiday season now as we continue this forward you start to see that by Thursday morning or Christmas Eve morning more of that snow is overlapping on that back end and then as we continue forward you start to see uh, some of that snow also move uh, further east. We're dealing with more of that rain, uh, rain and uh, also thunderstorm activity for much of that eastern half of the system. Basically from the Appalachians eastward, you're dealing with rain. And then as we continue this forward, you start to see more snow on that backside of the system. And then we start to see, again, that very, very cold air on that uh, on the back end of the system where you're dealing with temperatures potentially close to zero degrees as you get into the northern plains. And temperatures definitely in the low teens and even into the upper teens in some areas uh, as you get into the Ohio Valley and then into the central plains as well. So uh, as we continue this forward, you start seeing lake effect enhanced snowfall moving through portions of the Great Lakes. Now, one reason why I don't think a lot of these areas will be dealing with uh, much snowfall out of this uh, is mainly because first of all we're dealing with a dry slot of air moving through with that southerly uh, flow of energy uh, ahead of the system that'll allow some of that drier air to kind of move into portions of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, uh, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia. That area will get into some drier uh, conditions and you won't be able to see any of that rain transition over to snow or at least I don't think that's likely at this point. What we're also going to see is that a lot of these areas east of about uh, or basically from New England and eastward you're going to be dealing with uh, most of that rain because that low pressure will be to your north and it'll also be a little bit to your west so a lot of these areas will actually stay all rain but I think most of that rain does move out by about noon time on Christmas now as we continue this forward you start to see that cold air mass takes place and you might even see some lake effect snow on that backside if the Canadian and the GFS is correct now here's what the European model is showing we see that area of energy move south from uh, the Rockies 
we see that converge with more of that southerly energy and we're starting to see some snow develop on that western and northern side of the storm that storm continues to move eastward uh, and we're dealing with more of that snow again on that western half of the storm the snow by this point is in missouri illinois wisconsin michigan and this would be early on christmas eve morning and then here would be by right around lunchtime or actually the early evening on christmas eve and we're looking at more of that rain enveloping the eastern united states snow again on that western side of the storm and then that snow continues to develop more uh, as you get closer to the Appalachians that's where more of your snow is going to develop and you could even see a couple areas here get over six inches of snow uh, on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve night and then as you continue this forward you start to see that low pressure goes up through near Montreal by this point and then you're dealing with more of that snow and cold air wrapping around on the back end the further north this storm actually goes the more snow that you or the more cold and snow that you'll see on that back side uh, for example if this low pressure does take a track closer to Montreal then you're going to have more cold air displaced out of uh, eastern Canada that'll have to be funneled down into the eastern United States if you have this low pressure kind of just slide down uh, further to the south what you're going to end up seeing is a much weaker amount of cold air you're not going to see as much cold air so if you do want some more snow on the back end you actually do want a more northerly track because you might be able to dig in some cold air as the system is still departing and you might even even be able to see some snow if you do live within these regions so definitely there's still a lot that we do have to uh to kind of figure out here uh before christmas eve uh, and i think probably by uh tuesday we'll have a very very good handle of what is going to happen or at least a decent handle of what may happen with the storm here's by saturday morning and it's really getting out of here and then again lake effect and cold air on that back end of the system and then it really pulls away into southeastern quebec now here's the gfs model snowfall and we're looking at maybe six to twelve inches in some areas in those purples and pinks in the blues that's where you're looking at two to six inches of snowfall so you can see a lot of those areas i would say west of western ohio is not really seeing that much snowfall mainly because the transition will be much quicker you're not going to see as much snowfall be put out from that but as you get more of that colder to wrap in uh, as you get probably closer to, Chris, uh, to Christmas morning as it's moving through portions of the Ohio Valley and into the western uh, or probably uh, into the Appalachians and the interior northeast you're looking at more of that snowfall because it's going to stick around over that area for a longer amount of time. Here's what the Canadian model is showing and you can see uh, quite a bit of snowfall just really centered around those Great Lakes where a couple areas are again seeing 6 to 12 inches or more of snowfall so definitely you might be having to shovel out on Christmas morning and then here would be what the European model is showing and a lot more snowfall but still generally located over that same area so here's a couple different things that I'm going to be watching over the next couple of days first of all it's going to be how far north does that system track does it stay over upstate New York or does it move into uh, southern Quebec that's going to be a big difference in how much snowfall you see on that back end something else that I'm going to track is how far south does that range and snow line get to uh, also, how much co convective activity can we actually see over some of these regions? And also, uh, where does the heaviest band of snowfall set up? And uh, do you get a lot of snowfall throughout these regions? Because there has been some discrepancy with that. Uh, so there is still definitely a few things that I am tracking with the storm and that I'm going to continue to look at to make sure that we do get the most accurate forecast for the system. And definitely, there are still going to be a lot of factors, especially with such a dynamic system like this there's so many different factors that we're going to have to look into so that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye